Jerry at Fair Oaks. There's a keen place to park, Dad, right straight ahead. This see right there between those cars? We'll be near the platform, too. Okay, I see it, Jerry. We're just about on time. Yeah, that's because Ted drove slow. If we'd have hurried, we'd have been way ahead of time. Huh, Harold? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, here we be. All out. I'll take your hand back, Harold. Thanks. What's that you said about me driving slowly? Nothing. I just said you sort of took your time. Oh, I always do. When Major Davis first let me drive this station wagon, I promised him I'd be careful, and I have been. How long have you been driving it now? Oh, over two years. Just once in a while, though. You know, in an emergency. Mm. Well, come on, let's get over to the platform. We can watch the train coming in. Yeah, okay. Come on, Harold. Harold? Yeah? What did I tell you about crying? I can't help it, Ted. I try not to. Listen, Harold, we know how you feel. It's tough. It, it's awful tough for you, but really, you, you can't do any good by crying. Besides, when you get there and you see your dad, well, well, gee, you wouldn't want him to see your eyes all red. I know it, but... Oh, come on, Harold. Brace up. It's never as bad as it seems. Maybe your dad will be okay by the time you get there. Yeah, and he might be... No, no, Harold. Well... Well, you fellas wait here. Watch this Gripley. I'll go over and yeah. get your ticket, Harold. Okay. Now, listen. By the time you get to the hospital, I'll bet your dad will be much better. You'll see. Then it'll all be over. You should be grateful you can get to him, Harold. I suppose he was in some other country and you couldn't get there. Yeah, I know it. Mrs. Gardner said the doctor told her he was going to be all right. Well, what'll I say when I get in to see him? Oh, nobody can tell you that, Harold. But don't worry about it. The right words will come to you when you get there. That's right, Harold. All you have to do is just pull yourself together. Remember, Jerry... I told you I thought Dad would get it someday. Yeah, and you told me he had a couple of little accidents, too. The only difference is that this one is a, is a little worse, but he'll get over it. <laughs> you can't keep a man like your dad down for long. I hope you're right. Yes, you'll find he is right, Harold. Well, in a couple of months, you'll be laughing at yourself <laughs> for even shedding one tear. All set. I got your ticket. Here you are. Thanks, Ted. Now, you're in lower six in car number 12. Got your money now? Uh-huh. Right here in my pocket. Well, hang on to it. And hang on to your ticket, too, until the conductor collects it. I will. Well, here it comes. Now, you be sure and do what Mrs. Gardner told you to. And be sure to phone long distance after you see your dad. Oh, put the call through to Major Davis. Yeah, I know. I will. Hey, look at this big streamliner, Harold. There's car 12. Come on. Mm -hmm. I got your grip. All aboard. Here, Harold. Here's a couple of candy bars for you. Thank you, sir. Right here. Come on, get on. The porter will show you to your seat. All right. Up you go. Well, so long, fellas. Come so on, Harold. Good Keep your chin up. And don't forget to be cheerful. Now. Oh, I'll let's see you smile. That's it. Now keep it there. Remember, see you, Dad, Harold. You have a nice trip, and you'll be good. Take care of yourself. So long. Bye. Well, there he goes. Yeah, poor kid. I sure feel sorry for him. Yeah. I think Mrs. Gardner made a good suggestion when she asked us to take him down to the train. Yeah, I guess we did kind of make him feel a little better. You know, the funny thing about him, I mean, well, if it had been anybody else, I wouldn't have taken it to heart so, but Harold, well, I don't know how to put it, he just doesn't seem grown up. 
And I hope his dad pulls through okay. Don't we all? Hey, did you notice Mrs. Gardner when she said goodbye to him? It was all she could do to hold back the tears. Yes, I caught that, and even Captain Gardner didn't have much to say. Oh, Harold's such a nice little fella. You sort of take him into your heart. Everybody does. Well, here's the wagon. Hop in. No, oh, come on up front. We can all sit in the front seat. All right. There we go. drive as good as Kirk Prentice, Ted. Oh, was that supposed to be a compliment? Hey, what are you talking about? Kirk's a good driver. I've seen him turn that big bus around like, well, like it was a baby carriage. <laughs> oh, sure, I was just kidding. <laughs> hey, want to stop off at Max for a minute or so? Hey, that's an idea. I could go for a nice cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> it would be chocolate. Mm, yeah, boy, my favorite. <laughs> we'll surprise him at this time of night. What do you mean? Well, no one from school ever gets over to Max at this hour. See, that's right. I'm glad we're going to stop, though. He'll want to know about Harold. Oh, does he know about it? Oh, yeah, sure. Jerry and I were in his place when the papers came. We found out about it first. Well, here we are. Harold was in Mac's place, too, wasn't he, when Mrs. Gardner called him? Uh-huh, but he didn't see the papers. Uh, Mac hid them behind the counter. Oh, that's how it was. Hey, I wonder if Mac's still open. Oh, sure he is. He just hasn't got the lights on in the window. Oh, yeah, I can see him from here. Uh, he's right behind the counter, as usual. No, we can't stay long. I've got to get to the wagon back to the garage and take the keys back to Major Davis's office. Okay, Ted. Hello, Mac. Well, well, well. <laughs> this is an unexpected surprise. Well, and a pleasure to my Ted. Hey, well, what are you lads doing here at this hour? Well, let, let's see what time it is. Well... Why, this is study hall time. Yeah, we just took Harold Linwell to the train, Mac. Oh. He's going to see his dad. Oh, I see. Well, that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I, I'm glad he got to do that. Uh, Mrs. Gardner told him then. Huh? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, she told him as gently as she could, and then he stayed there at their place for dinner. Oh, I see. Captain Gardner made all the arrangements for him to go. Oh, uh, tell me, did he, uh, did he take it pretty hard? I guess at first he did, but Mrs. Gardner gave him a good talking to him. Well, he seemed all right. Uh, uh, yeah, well, the worst part is over. It's that first blow of, of, of hearing the news that's bad. Uh, it uh, sweeps you off your feet for a second, so to speak. Th that man that Mr. Linwell works for, Mr. Layton, called Mrs. Gardner and broke the news to him. Oh, uh, He's the one that suggested that Harold come, come there to be with his father. Oh, uh, that was very thoughtful of him. Yeah. Well, uh, you lads going to have something? Oh, uh, how about it, Jerry? You going to have that chocolate? Are you fellas going to have something? Well, I, I don't care for anything, Mac. I had a big dinner. Mm, I don't want anything either. Well, I won't bother. We've got to get back anyway. Well, uh, uh, I'll I tell you, lads, if, if you'll have something, it'll uh, it'll be on the house. What? Another tree? Uh, I, 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 another tree. Uh, first, you told me that the only time a cadet got anything free was when he first came to Fair Oaks and then when he graduated. Oh. Then last week, when I had my sore arm, you treated me and said you treated when a boy gets hurt, too. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, uh, that's right. Uh, so I did, yeah. Well, now, what do you want a treat tonight for? Oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, no. Tonight is a special occasion. I didn't recall when I've had any boys from the school in here at this hour of night. Well, thanks, Mac, but we'll skip it. Hmm. We just dropped in for a minute to tell you about Harold. Oh, well, that's that's uh, that's nice of you. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Yes, sir, I, I appreciate it very much. Oh, uh, wait, no, uh, tell me. Uh, did Harold, uh, uh, what's the word you use, uh, uh, break up? No, he held up fairly well. That is, considering. Uh, oh, well, uh, his father will pull through all right. He'll get the best of care. Yeah, you can be sure of that, yes, sir. He'll get the very finest. Yeah, it was a pretty bad crash, though. Oh, I, that it was. I, I guess as bad as I've ever heard about. You know, I, I I read the accounts of it over again, and, and it made me shudder. Yes, sir, it did. Just like it uh, just like it said in the paper, though, he was lucky. I, I, very lucky. It could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, and uh, you can what that would mean. Oh, yeah. But I was sure a break when that tree fell on the plane and put the fire out. Oh, wasn't it, though? Oh. Yes, sir, very fortunate. Very fortunate. Well, look, if you fellas want to stay a while, it's okay with me, but I really should no, take we'll the wagon No, we'll go along with you, Ted. Uh, well, 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 no study hall for you tonight, lads? Mm -mm. No, we were excused to take Harold down to the train. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, uh, that's right. Well, we'll most likely see you tomorrow, Mac. Oh, yeah, uh, all right, lads. Uh, good night. Good night, Mac. Good night. Good night. So long. Mm, old Mac's all right. You bet he is. You know, he's always taken an interest in all the fellas at the school. And he's sincere, too. 
Hey, look out. Here comes a car. Run. Well, we made it. <laughs> Hop in, fellas. Well, we're off. Well, I uh, will be. Hmm. Well, here we go. Hey, where are you going, Ted? I'll take you fellas up to the front of Costas Hall and let you out. Then I'll put the car away and walk back. I will go along if you want us to. No, that's okay. No need of us all walking back from the garage. Well, here we are. Yep. All out. Well, good night, Ted. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Lee. Good night. See you tomorrow. Study hall ought to be out about now. Yeah, it seems like it. We'll look at the clock in the hall. Well... Harold's well on his way by now. Mm-hmm. Let's see what time it is. Well, I'll say Steady Hall ought to be out soon. Just about a half a minute to eight. Hey, come on, then. Let's run for it. We'll be just in time to tune in to the 8 o'clock news broadcast on the radio. Oh, yeah. Maybe there'll be some more news about Guy Linwell. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, come on. What's holding you up? Boy, you, you ought to be on a track team. You suggested running, and that's what I'm doing. Hey, you're galloping. Look out for a sharp turn. Coming? Yeah. Uh, I'm right in your heels. Mm, last one to the room has to wake up the fuel in the morning. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're last. No, sir. It's a tie. <laughs> Okay, quick, turn on the radio. The news should be just starting. Come on, warm up, Sid. Don't get it too loud. All week, so take advantage of them. And now for the news. Our first item is from Moreland Field, where this afternoon a giant government bomber crashed with Guy Linwell, famous test pilot, at the controls. A government board of inquiry late this evening took steps to investigate, but it was learned that the controls of the giant ship were apparently in good order at the time of the crash. The investigators are going to ask certain questions. Number one. Who were the mysterious people who pulled Linwell from the plane and then disappeared while Linwell was still unconscious? Number two, what were the boxes that had contained photographic film doing at the scene of the crack-up? Number three, was the little white flag found on the field where Linwell crashed put there as a signal to him, or has it some other and more innocent meaning? These questions are riddles and will remain so until Linwell can be questioned. Today in New York, a certain Turn man... Turn it off, Jerry. That's all about Harold said. Gee, that, that sounds bad, Lee. It certainly sounds as though there's something mysterious about that crash. Yeah, and, and about Harold's dad. 